my name is Tony Dagonia, and I am here to do a quick demo on the Torque platform. Um, I've had uh, I've had access to the Torque platform for a few days, uh, and took the opportunity to build out build out a couple of things uh, that I thought were were kind of interesting. Um, my goal here was to build something that worked uh, and I was able to do that uh, with with one of these two demos uh, the second one I'm still still working on but uh, I should have it here shortly uh, we'll start with the first one uh, that's our phishing email demo uh, which is right here um, so we'll go ahead and click on that and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, at this. So what this is doing is this is actually uh, kind of emulating uh, what uh, a workflow for a uh, for if we were monitoring email boxes in an environment for uh, for phishing emails, you know, spam that sort of thing. Uh, so normally we would put something like, uh, you know, something that would monitor uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, we could do a search right here and see any number of uh, email, um, email security tools. Uh, that's our utilities. There's 49 of them. Uh, there's over 100. Uh, there's over a hundred plugins, which are integrations for uh, those third-party tools and, and utilities. Um, so you know, th there's plenty of stuff here uh, that you could use, that you could integrate with, uh, that would show you, you know, kind of what's going on in those those email boxes. Uh, so in emulating this, uh, we needed a trigger. Uh, so in order to run this workflow, something's got to kick it off. And uh, in this case, I used uh, an, what's called an on-demand trigger. It gives you that test run button right there. Um, and I did that because I'm not going to import, you know, email logs every time we work on this. Um, so uh, we've got this uh, on-demand trigger. Uh, executes workflow. Um, it'll also, when it has uh, when it has logs, it'll show you the logs right here uh, under event log. Uh, so we see all of this. Uh, then, then I built a series of uh, what are called set variables, um, and you can find those over here on this side really easily. I'll clean that up. Hold on. Set variables. And uh, so you've got, you've got a couple of different uh, things you can use here. Uh, I used the variables, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the X. Um, and I dropped those in just one at a time. And then went through and populated them. So the fields you populate are your your variable name, or your your block name. I apologize. Uh, and then your variable name, which has to be all basically all one word. So you use underscores and things like that. Uh, your data type, uh, you you can choose from a string, a number, uh, a Boolean search, or a JSON, uh, or you can select from the context. Um, in this case, we, we just used uh, standard strings. Um, and then the actual email address that you're going to be searching for. Uh, and this comes into play because what you'd be looking for is uh, email addresses that are part of indicators of compromise. Um, so like, for example, 
you know, we're going to run this, we're going we're gonna to pull these over, maybe we compare them with, you know, virus total or, uh, you know, the open threat exchange. One of those uh, cybersecurity threat intelligence platforms uh, that, that can be fed in here uh, so that we can gather that information and enrich, uh, en enrich the variables that we want to see very, very quickly. Um, so we're also looking at the headers. We're looking for the sender IP address. Uh, we're also looking for the email subject uh, because those are generally really good indicators of compromise. Uh, and, and you see those things uh, quite a bit when you're looking through uh, different indicators of compromise. Um, if there's a hash, we're going to try and match that up. Um, so that we can see the hash and, you know, from the mail server it's coming from. Um, if there are any URLs that are attached, uh, which there usually are, uh, URLs that will send you to a malicious website or, or whatever, maybe they want you to, to click on the link and, you know, hit a drive-by download or uh, any number of things. Um, Download some software to allow, you know, botnets to take over your machine, uh, things like that. Um, then the next thing we have is uh, we actually score these indicators of compromise uh, with virus total, right? Uh, so in this case, we would we would have the the score come in and be populated because this is just a demo. Uh, we went ahead and built a variable for that score, uh, and we gave it a score of five. Um, for the IP addresses, we also take a look at uh, at abuse IP DB, and uh, that will return a score to you as well. Uh, we put in a score of sixty-seven. Um, I mean, it is a demo, so it's it's a pretty controlled environment. Um, after that, we dropped in uh, our operator uh, conditional logic block. Uh, this is basically an if and type block. And uh, as you can see, it's got two legs. Uh, we told it true and false. Uh, so we told the, uh, the operator if, uh, if the malicious score, the BT malicious score in this variable was higher than eight, uh, then it would go down the positive side. And if it was higher than 75 on the abuse score side, then it would be a true uh, statement. Uh, if it was under either one of those, then it would be false and it would route over here. Um, which basically, you know, as it goes down the true side, you're going to see the status. Um, so it's going to tell you that it's a confirmed suspicious indicator of compromise. Uh, you'll see the summary, which will return uh, this block of data, uh, which will it'll land in the uh, logs. But as you forward those logs back out to, you know, SimSor, uh, or any other utility, uh, it'll have all that information right there for you. And then we have an operator exit, uh, which basically stops the workflow so that it doesn't accidentally overrun or, you know, uh, cause this particular workflow to hang up. Uh, if you give me a second here, we're going to do a test run on this. So basically we have test run up here which will trigger this on-demand trigger. And we'll see as it starts going down the line and running through all of these different variables. Uh, then it'll hit the variable status, the variable summary, and it'll terminate on the operator exit. <clears throat> now, from here, we can take a look at a couple of things. Uh, we can look at the sender email. And we can actually see the execution log. So this is the log that was created when it was ran through a test run. And, you know, if, if the process in that particular variable worked or in that particular block worked, then you get a green check mark. And if not, uh, you'll get a red X. Um, 
and it'll tell you why it failed uh, that operation. Um, the, the other thing you can do is you can take a look at your run log and you can see your date and time stamped uh, steps in the process over here on the left. Uh, so uh, you can see everything that's happened, how long it took for those things to happen. Um, so you can see how long the entire workflow is going to take. Uh, and, you know, uh, there's even some places in here where you can see how much time it's going to save you over manually doing discovery and triage. Um, so we'll hop back over into the designer. Uh, this is pretty much it for the uh, for the demo. We took a look at some of the logs. Um, you know, I'll, I'll hop back over here real quick and I'll take a look. Uh, we I was working on a second demo uh, with the integration for the OTX because I wanted to show uh, something that worked that actually went outside of this demo environment and pull data back in um, and it's working but it's still a little bit broken because I'm not uh, I'm getting an error on the final step um, and, and I'm positive it's a syntax error so it's really just a matter of figuring that out uh, this is all this whole platform is new to me so you know uh, give me a couple of more days with it, and I bet I'll, I bet I'll have it. Um, so we'll actually click on this, and we'll drill down. Uh, really simplified workflow. Uh, you've got your, your indicator of compromise, which is right down here. Now, this is a known... This is a known indicator of compromise. I went in and actually pulled it down from uh, the Open Thread Exchange. And uh, so I just wanted to be able to run this against the OTX and pull that information across. Uh, but as you can see, um, or as you will see, uh, it doesn't quite work the way we want it to. Um, yeah, see, we had a failure there, uh, and the failure is at key IP. Um, the function set IOC underscore AP was not delivered. So for some reason, the information we have in here is not getting delivered down here properly. And like I said, more likely it's syntax. Um, but I'll keep working on it. Uh, you can do the same thing here, though. You can check out your run log. You can see all of these logs, date and time stamp, the amount of time it took for each step of the process to run. And, uh, you know, get some pretty good details there. Um, beyond that, I think uh, this demo is pretty well done. Uh, I appreciate everyone who watches this taking a minute to check it out. Uh, feel free to give me your feedback. I'd love to have it. And, uh, you know, if, you, uh, if you're part of the interviewing team that this was done for, uh, you should have my contact information. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to uh, shoot me a message or give me a call. And uh, other than that, you guys have a great week. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.